Hello, welcome to the course PH5 BIOS X Electrodynamics 2. The contents of this course is taken from Introduction to Electrodynamics by David J. Griffiths. In this class, we have discussed about the geometrical aspects of electromagnetic waves. Today, let's see what is the energy transported by the electromagnetic waves. To understand this, we need to first learn a very important theorem in electrodynamics known as the pointing theorem. If you recollect our discussion in electrostatics, we have derived an expression for energy stored in the electrostatic field, which is nothing but the work done against the Coulombic repulsion to have a static charge collection. This is given by epsilon over 2 integral e square d tau. Same way, the energy stored in the magnetic field, which is nothing but the work done against the back EMF to get the current flowing in a circuit. This is given by 1 over 2 mu naught integral b square d tau. So the total energy stored in the electromagnetic field per unit volume is the electrostatic energy plus the magnetostatic energy. So the energy density small u is given by half epsilon naught e square plus 1 over mu naught b square. So this is the energy density. When you take the volume integral of the energy density, you get the corresponding energy. Assume that you have some volume B surrounded by a boundary surface S and you have some charge and current configuration inside this volume. Let E be the electric field associated with the configuration and B be the magnetic field associated with the configuration. If the charges move a bit, the question is what is the work done by the electromagnetic force on the charges? So if you take a time interval dt, you need to calculate the corresponding work done dw. Let's first choose a single charge and calculate what is the work done. Then we can move on to calculate the total work done on all the charges. So for a single charge work done dw is force multiplied by corresponding displacement. From the Lorentz law, I can write the electromagnetic force as Q into E plus V cross B, where V is the velocity of the charge. And the displacement DL can be written as a product of velocity and the time. So this is V dt. V cross B is perpendicular to V. So if you take dot product of two perpendicular vectors, that goes to zero. So the second term gets cancelled. So dW equal to Q into E dot V dt. Charge can be represented in terms of charge density as a rho d tau. Similarly, we collect the expression current density J equal to rho multiplied by velocity V. So in this expression, for Q, I can write rho d tau. Similarly, V can be substituted by J over rho. So rho rho get cancelled. You get dW equal to E dot J dt d tau or dW by dt. This is the rate of work done on a single charge. This is equal to E dot J d tau. If you want to calculate the rate of work done on all the charges inside the volume V, simply take the volume integral of this. So this becomes dW by dt volume integral E dot J d tau. If you recollect the Maxwell's equation, curl of B equal to mu naught J plus mu naught epsilon naught dou E by dou T, if you rearrange the terms, you can write J equal to 1 over mu naught curl of B minus epsilon naught dou E by dou T. So in the expression E dot J, substitute for J using this expression. So this becomes 1 over mu naught E dot curl of B minus epsilon naught E dot dou E by dou T. 
Using the product rule in vector analysis, you can write del dot e cross b equal to b dot curl of e minus e dot curl of b. The term of interest is e dot curl of b. So take e dot curl of b to the left hand side and this term to the right hand side, you get e dot curl of b equal to b dot curl of e minus del dot e cross b. Once again, using Maxwell's equation, you can replace curl of e with minus dou b by dou t. This is Faraday's law. Okay. So, the term becomes e dot curl of b equal to minus b dot dou b by dou t minus del dot e cross b. Look at this term, b dot dou b by dou t. I can write it as half dou by dou t b square. Okay. So derivative of b square is 2b dou b by dou t. 2 to cancel, you have b into dou b by dou t. Since b and dou b by dou t are parallel vectors, the normal product is same as the dot product. So this term is exactly same as this term. Similarly, I have another term, e dot dou e by dou t. Using the same line of thought, I can write it as half dou by dou t e square. So it's time now to make all the substitution. So our original expression e dot j now becomes 1 over mu naught. For e dot curl of b, I can substitute this expression and this term is replaced by this term. So this is minus half dou by dou t b square minus del dot e cross b minus epsilon naught. Instead of e dot dou e by dou t, I can write this expression. So this is minus epsilon naught half dou by dou t e square. So these two terms look uh, very similar. I have a minus half term common and the time derivative is common. So club these two terms, take the common terms out, you get e dot j equal to minus half dou by dou t epsilon naught e square plus 1 over mu naught b square minus 1 over mu naught del dot e cross b. And the rate of work done is nothing but a volume integral of this term. So dw by dt equal to volume integral of e dot j. Now I have two volume integral terms. Uh, the second term is a divergence, volume integral of a divergence. By invoking the Gauss law, I can convert this into a surface integral. So the rate of work done becomes minus d by dt volume integral half epsilon naught e square plus 1 over mu naught b square d tau minus 1 over mu naught closed surface integral e cross b dA. Let's try to understand what is the physical meaning of this. So the term inside we already defined this as the energy density or electromagnetic energy density and when you take a volume integral of energy density you get the total energy stored in the field. And the second term is a surface integral so this is nothing but the rate at which energy is transported out of the volume across its boundary surface S by the electromagnetic fields. So this theorem essentially talks about the relation between work done and the energy stored or transported. So this is known as work energy theorem. A more famous name for this theorem is the pointing theorem, which states that work done on the charges by the electromagnetic force is equal to the decrease in energy stored in the fields minus the energy that flowed out through the surface. And if you look at the second term, this term 1 over mu naught e cross b is known as a pointing vector. This is a very, very important parameter in the case of electromagnetic 
waves and what's the meaning of pointing vector so this entire term second term is nothing but work per time or energy per time so you have pointing vector multiplied by area equal to energy by time or pointing vector is energy per time per area so pointing vector gives you energy per unit time per unit area transported by the electromagnetic field another name for this is energy flux density or a more commonly used terminology is the intensity there is another important inference here look at the direction of the energy flow so this is given by e cross b right so in the last class when we discussed about the geometrical aspects of electromagnetic waves we said we have three important vectors one is the electric field vector e magnetic field vector b and the propagation vector k these three vectors form a right hand system meaning cross product of two gives you the direction of third vector so e cross b gives you the direction of k similarly k cross e gives you the direction of b or b cross k gives you the direction of e so pointing vector is in the direction of e cross b which is nothing but the direction of k so energy transport in an electromagnetic wave occurs along the direction of propagation and not in the direction of electric field because yesterday when i said electric field is the dominant component in an electromagnetic wave and most of the wave characteristic we try to specify in terms of the electric field so you may be tempted to believe that the energy transport also occurs in the direction of electric field but that's not true it happens along the direction of the propagation vector so once you define pointing vector i can rewrite the pointing theorem in terms of the pointing vector as dw by dt equal to minus d by dt volume integral this is the energy density so energy density u d tau minus closed surface integral s dot d a now this definition is slightly ambiguous because i have two types of energies involved here first one of course is the electromagnetic energy stored in the field but the moment i start doing work on the charges the potential energy and the kinetic energy associated with the charges start to change so i have a mechanical energy component as well so to indicate that this term explicitly corresponds to electromagnetic energy i put a subscript em here so electromagnetic energy density u em equal to half epsilon not e square plus 1 over mu not b square similarly the rate of work done this results in a change in me mechanical energy given by energy density u mech so dw by dt can be written as d by dt volume integral u mech d so our original integral expression for the pointing theorem now you can rewrite in terms of the mechanical energy density and the electromagnetic energy density so instead of dw by dt i have d by dt volume integral u mech d tau which is equal to minus d by dt volume integral instead of u i have u electromagnetic d tau minus closed surface integral s dot d a now convert this surface integral back into the volume integral using gauss theorem this becomes d by dt volume integral u mech d tau equal to minus d by dt volume integral u electromagnetic d tau minus volume integral divergence of s d tau so you have volume integral on either side so you can disregard the volume integral and worry only about the term inside 
So I have a time derivative of mechanical energy on the left hand side and time derivative of electromagnetic energy density on the right hand side. Let's club them together and write a dou by dou t u mechanical plus u electromagnetic equal to minus divergence of s. Mechanical energy density plus electromagnetic energy density this gives you the total energy density u. So expression become dou u by dou t equal to minus divergence of s. So this is the differential form of Poynting theorem. If you recollect the continuity equation from magnetostatics, divergence of j equal to minus dou rho by dou t or you can write dou rho by dou t equal to minus divergence of j. Let's quickly compare these two expressions. I have energy density here, charge density here. Similarly, I have charge flow on the right hand side. Here I have energy flow on the right hand side. So these two equations are exactly same in terms of the form of equation. And continuity equation talks about the conservation of charges so in the same vein, the point in theorem talks about the conservation of energy. So that's about the, the energy transport by the electromagnetic waves. In the next class, we will derive specific equations for energy, intensity and momentum of monochromatic plane waves. Thank you.